Hi there, Keegan Neva for the Neva Engineering Blog, um, and now company, um, that's a new thing. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about our old friend McVeagle Prime. So, for those who have been following at home, uh, this was the robot I entered for Pi Wars 2020, which was, well, postponed and then cancelled and then reinvented as an online competition. Um, came second or third, I can't quite remember there, in the um, tech category, which I was very proud of, and first overall for fan favourite slash public folks, whatever that was called, um, and came quite high on artistic merit as well. Uh, very, very proud of that, especially for my first robot of this complexity. And yeah, I've entered Pi Wars 2021, which is going to be an at-home event from the start. Um, I'm not going to talk about that per se. Uh, what I'm going to do is a lessons learned kind of style of video. So, things I'll be changing, first off. Um, for one thing, it's December at the minute and the competition's in, well, the videos have to be submitted mid-March, so it doesn't really give much time, but I kind of quit my job a couple of weeks ago. So, the plan is I'm going to be a full-time roboticist and this will be my portfolio. So I'm gonna take a few months off to really try and, and get the, the skills ramped up and to, to have a good body of work to show off as uh, pr prospective uh, customers and or people whose jobs I will be applying for. So, lessons learned. Uh, this works really well. So, I'll start off with things that did work because that's, that's quite an important one really. So, the the modular head, the the circuit board in there has, uh, well, not the circuitry, the Raspberry Pi, the um, Stereo Pi, and the breadboard. They're all on a modular caddy. So you, if it changes or I have to move things around, I change the caddy rather than having to redesign the whole head um, and reprint it, which is what I was doing to start with. So that's staying. That's for definite staying. Um, the removable eyes as well, so that you can get access to the ports. That's incredibly useful. And this magnetic skull cap, that is just a massive win. So they're, they're staying for sure. Um, the design of kind of the shoulders, um, the arms, that's probably not really going to change for the next version, because um, it is pretty much just going to be a rebuild. Um, the, the torso itself, um, the reason um, it's this big is because it's got a ridiculously large battery. Um, by ridiculously large, I think it's, well, it's um, 6, 3S6P, so that means three lithium-ion um, 186650 cells in series, and then six of them in parallel. And I can't remember what it is in watt hours or, or whatever, no pun intended for once, but um, I calculated that if I was to switch, leave this switched on when it was fully charged in standby, it'd probably be fine for two, maybe three days, which is complete overkill. Um, considering this wasn't just going to be for the competitions, it was going to be for, for more research and development purposes as well, that's still overkill. Um, and that's where a lot of the weight comes from. I think it's just shy of five kilograms or something like that. So I managed to scavenge a bunch of um, higher capacity 18650s. So I'm going to make a 3 by 3 battery, which should halve the weight. And not only that, but reduce the amount of size so I can the aesthetics can change a little. Um, Something else that was tricky, which I knew it would be tricky, and that's what everyone said, but it's the tracks. So these were printed in segments and then attached together. Um, and on the inside, now clearly you'll be able to see this, but there's essentially a strip of rubber along the outsides of each of these um, on, on the inside of the track, obviously. And the idea there was that when it came apart, like that, for example, um, the rubber band would at least vaguely still hold them together. Now, didn't work. Um, it couldn't drive that far without the tracks coming off, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, apparently, and this is something James Bruton learned, which I'm glad he's kind of doing some of this stuff at the minute as well. Um, the wheels themselves, they're chamfered, and I figured that that would be great because it means that the matching pyramid type structure on the inside of the track would fall into it. So if it comes loose, it'll kind of reseat itself. Turns out that 
because of the way these prints are ridged, that actually acts as a really nice ladder and it throws the tracks up in no time. So the track, the wheels will be redesigned so that they've got square edges, um, which should help apparently. And I figured out that um, in a proper circle, as it were, that I can print in one go on my printer. So I might have to shorten the wheelbase a little, but that wouldn't be a problem because we're gonna have smaller batteries uh, and hence more room to play with. But the plan is to print the new tracks in one go. Um, other things that will be changed. For one thing, I'll actually get the hands working because I never actually got that far. I got them all designed, but I couldn't quite get the gripper mechanism to work. So I'm gonna do go, go back to something a bit simpler and just get it working. And yeah, get it working and then improve it. And something else that's changed since then is the, the Redboard library. So, um, Approximate Engineering on Twitter. I'm having a complete name blank when it comes to names at the minute, so apologies for that. Um, he's rewritten the Redboard library and one thing that's been added is support for this servo, well, it's a PWM breakout shield board thing and what that means is rather than where I have the Teensy connecting to it over, C, uh, over I squared C and the Raspberry Pi talking to the Teensy um, I can remove a step so at the minute we've got the head and neck and the torso assemblies they're all controlled by the red board and because of the number of um, servos involved the arms are completely controlled by this this um, I squared C board. Um, this way by hooking that up directly to the Pi using the Redboard library it means that I can just have all of the server control code in one place which will just tidy things up a great deal. And, and yeah I think those are going to be the big things to change. Hopefully the new version of the Stereo Pi will be released uh, before then or I might be able to get their hands on one, I'm not sure, you know, fingers crossed, but um, that's based around the Compute Module 4, is that the right word for it? The latest version, it's the same chipset and whatnot as the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 anyway. Um, so you've got all that extra uh, compute power available, uh, the GPU core that's actually got a, a, the, the full um, SDK available around it as well, so you got should have a lot more power to play with there for OpenCV. Um, and most importantly, more RAM, um, which if I'm trying to do everything on one board, I don't know how much of an issue that's gonna be because I didn't actually get that far with this one. So, um, but yeah, it's, I think that's just, it'd be tidy if I could get it all, all in one place. So those are the big challenges, um, but I think the vast majority of it's done. Worst case scenario, I could just finish this off and base it all on here, um, but I won't be. And, yeah, so this, I'll probably keep McFeagle Prime in one piece. I've actually got another um, compute module, so I'd only have to buy a, a cheap Stereo Pi breakout board without the other bits. Um, so I could get, I'm actually thinking of building a completely new robot, but using this one for all of the, the software engineering side of things, so that I've got it to work with while the other one's kind of in progress. Because I, I want to put in the um, the analog feedback servos, for example, so that as for one thing, the arms could be back drivable. Then, so I can go right. I want you to stand like this. Then I can press a button and record the movements, and then kind of do a fist pump. And then that can be like a, a taunt, like you get in computer games. You can just play that back, and it'll know where its arm already is, and go all right, kudunk. It's that, things like that, but it, it also means if we've got feedback, if he's going to pick something up, for example, what if the servo is still trying to move further, but it can detect that the pincers haven't actually moved, it knows that it's stalling. So it's, it's not just for the, the daft things, but mostly. Um, yeah, and, and that's kind of, kind of it really the the sensors need hooking up as well they'll all must be secondary because I'm hoping to use the stereo vision for, for the primary um, environment detection and whatnot but yeah stay tuned really I mean it's 
it's going to be a bit of a slow burn over the next couple of weeks because I'm still working out my notice period. But once that passes, then yeah, it'll be full steam ahead. So, um, the other thing is, uh, if you've followed this long, clearly you're interested. Um, and if you're interested in helping out, I actually have a Patreon page. So, best case scenario, I'm somehow able to get this Patreon and this channel to take off at which point I'll be able to have enough funds to do this full time to carry on building robots like this one, like the the smaller one the for navigation mapping, the, the low cost open source robot, and the, the cargo robot I want to build as well based around the really useful box. Um, they'd all be open sourced and ideally that's what I'd be able to do for a living and that would be fantastic. Um, but I'm also a realist, so yeah, may or may not happen. But to that end I have a Patreon page. Um, you can join up for as low as a quid, which all helps. Um, there's then a five pounds here and 15 pounds here. There's a link in the description. It's um, patreon.com forward slash need eng, which is the same for all the rest of my social media presences. And yeah, if you can help there, it would be a great help. And uh, we'll see how far down the rabbit hole we can go. So hope to have you along for the journey. God, that was cheesy as hell. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a hell of a journey. Um, even if that journey is just following lines on um, the range. I just figured it. Just sat there showing your backside of the thing. No manners. And yeah, that's it really. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe and all that jazz. You know how YouTube works. And yeah, speak to you next time. Bye for now.